Well, sunshine, what's it going on? Today, I'm going to show a video of my hay preservative system that I have from old New Holland 276 square baler. I'll go through this. It's all homemade. Well, store-bought out of Lego pieces. I'll tell you how I built it. Tell you some of the problems I had, some of the things to avoid. Watch in there. Uh, for instance, I had real bad luck with hay preservative eating up even the spray quality uh, regulators to get my pressure. We worked around that. Uh, let me show you the system here. Uh, just hang with us. This video won't be too long because honestly, guys, it ain't that hard to build one. Under a hundred bucks, I'd say, is what I got in this in here. Right at a hundred. I just thought of something. Uh, right at a hundred bucks. I don't have to use it a lot, but like today, I just come out of the house. She's hotter than the hubs of Hades out here right now. It's not. It's like 94 degrees, but the daggum humidity is uh, 67, 68 percent, and it's 115 degrees real feel. Well, anybody that knows equilibrium on hay, uh, there's a chart for that, and it'll never. If you got 67 percent moisture, your hay will never be any drier than let's say 18.2 percent. I don't know, there's a chart, I'm just pulling them numbers out of my butt, I'd have to look at the chart. Uh, but anyhow, and if you're dealing with that all the time, you may have to use hay preservative. I don't use it much, uh, but it sure gets me out of a bind when Mother Nature's on the horizon. They just, daggum lying weathermen, said I had a four-day window to dry hay, and all of a sudden, here comes rain on the second or third day, and my hay's at 20%, uh, almost ready to bale today. It, but it's going to rain tonight or tomorrow, so I can do this hay preservative. I can get that hay put up. It's safe. It's good. I'm not being a proponent for hay concern. Uh, I'm not a proponent or an opponent of that. It just is what it is. I've chose to use it some, uh, and I use it, and I feed it to my own stuff, and I sell it. And when I sell it to a customer, I let them know it's in there. Uh, it's all food grade, of course. But anyhow, you don't want to hear about that. You already know all that if you're here watching this, probably. And uh, unless you just watch me because you like watching me be goofy all the time. Uh, but anyhow, regardless, I will uh, walk you through this system here. And like I say, some people are for hay preservative, some are against it. And I'd say, oh, I bail, let's say 225, 250 ton of hay a year by myself and I sell the biggest majority of it. And I don't use hay preservative on maybe two to 5% of it, just maybe around the edges of a field where it ain't getting as much sun because I live in a bunch of trees, things like that. Uh, you'll see pictures of hay preservative and you'll see a tank up on top of guy's baler. And I know some people, if they go buy hay and they see that guy's baler and it's got a preservative tank up on top, they're automatically, uh, a little bit reluctant because they don't want the hay preservative and that's fine I'm not knocking that uh, but then again I don't want I don't hardly ever use hay preservative so I don't want to be advertising that I can really up on top of my bather so I'm running a New Holland 276 and it's got a uh, it's got a door right here and that'll all fit under there the only thing you can see from the outside is my spray nozzle the gauge and a little bitty dummy light up here. And I'll show you those a little bit better here in a minute. Now this door here, just this this opening here just opens right up. And she's dusty and dirty in there. Uh, you'll see I just keep my wheel chalk in there. And I got one of them 15 gallon garden sprayers or four wheeler sprayers uh, from the local farm store. 69 bucks I think is all that costs. So, so as far as making your own preservative applicator, I mean just do that there that's that's already made for you i come out of there and i tee out this is the, the fluid hose I come out of there and i tee out the one goes to my nozzle you guys probably can't see it now i'll zoom in i'll tell you what size of nozzles i use and it tees out and it runs into a fluid filled gauge now don't go to your local farm store they're only about 13 15 bucks for a fluid filled gauge but they're not stainless steel. 
and it has to be a stainless steel guts in that gauge. The outsides are stainless steel, but the insides aren't. And this preservative is real low pH and it's corrosive and it'll eat that brass inside of these gauges. So uh, I actually got a gauge for hay preservative. It was 25, 30 bucks. Uh, well worth it because $13 ones last the first day. Second day they don't work anymore. Now I just mounted the spray tip. I got a whole thing of accoutrements up here uh, in case I break down the field. I just mounted the spray tip in one of those uh, deals like you'd have for a sprayer. You can buy those at your local farm store. Uh, the I keep a screen. It probably looks solid in the camera, but that's like very small micron stainless steel screen I had laying around for another deal. And I just took and cut them out with a hole punch so they'd fit in there. That saved me a lot of trouble putting that spray, uh, having that, that screen in there. Uh, I was feuding that awful bad to begin with. I'd come overnight and it was eating up in mother's uh, springs or it'd set in here and get just a small minute bit of sediment out of the system and the problem is the spray tip i'm running is only like 15 thousandths uh that's what i need to get get the delivery flow i need um, i'm only running about 15 thousandths so it it'll plug up with a little bit of fly poop i mean it won't make her through the line with nothing uh so there's the spray tip uh you'll have to do some figuring i'll talk about figuring here in just a second i won't give you any specific numbers but i will talk about figuring uh what we need to do to make it on your figuring uh if you guys are watching this you probably already know it but it but it, if you don't uh i'll make it real quick i won't give you any specifics but i'll make it real quick uh, you need to know how many strokes a bale or how many strokes a minute your baler does you can find that you type in like this in here new holland 276 specs and it'll tell me it's running let's say 80 strokes a minute well i know i'm I also know that I'm making a 14, a 12 to 16 stroke bale. So I, I go on a 14 stroke bale. So you take 80 divided by 14. That's how many bales you're making a minute. So you got that. Now you need to know how many bales are in a ton. I just figure 40 bales in a ton. Uh, so you can extrapolate that out. If you know those two things, you can know how much, how many pounds of hay you're putting through this baler over any elapsed time because you can uh, tractor you can speed your tractor up slow your tractor down with the gear shift and keep those bales in there at 12 to 16 strokes uh, especially when you're doing preservative uh, outside of that i don't necessarily worry about it as much but if i'm putting on preservative i keep those bale strokes just right i count the strokes on the bale uh, so i can get the right amount of preservative on there and i just leave this set now on your spray tip you'll it'll uh, tell you how many gallons a minute it'll put out. Well, that's, uh, and it'll be point something gallons a minute on, on this little bitty spray tip here. So uh, you're gonna have to find probably an awful small spray tip to not put on, like you're not out spraying a field, it don't need that much. This here, it puts on quite a bit, but it ain't as much as you'd think. This is like the third smallest spray tip, it's, it's small. Uh, but you can do, you can do all that figuring. It's, she's, she's easy math. If you have any questions with it, should, post them in the comments down below, um, and we'll figure out a way where we can communicate back and forth off of this. And I can walk you through about any of that. You know, uh, this, this old neck didn't get this tired from lugging this old heavy brain around, uh, not to want to share it with people. Now you'll notice there wasn't a regulator in there, wasn't a pressure regulator in there. That's all taken care of on the electronics side of this machine and it was stuff i had laying around too now i may have more stuff laying around the average guy because i'll hoard anything man i may need that someday and lo and behold i did and it boy it's just slicker than a whistle on this here rig uh and it was something that i wasn't even using i'll show you how we're going to do away with the regulator and do it all with uh electricity and my switch box it ain't nothing too fancy right here uh it's just a metal throw my hat back here maybe shade it maybe make it easier to see it's just a metal uh four by four box or whatever they call them just regular house wiring box with a lid on it uh it's got an on off 12 volt switch in it and a light on it 
and that lights so I if I bump that with my hand and turn and turn that on I can see that right from the operator station of the tractor that hey I know I just kicked my pump on I may not want it on or <laughs> shear pin or something got to jump off tractor right quick I've got these dummy lights on there so that, that'll remind me hey that's on back there and I'm just squirting that expensive juice out on the ground uh, hay preservative costs about 25 cents a bale square bale to put on so a guy don't want to just be peeing his money out on the ground so a couple LED lights them come those are just vehicle marker lights is what they are hey, it's like seven bucks for a two pack of them so we're getting pretty expensive I've got a magnet on the bottom of it all my stuff's magnetic mounted uh, throw it on different tractors if I need to. I had to build that bracket for this John Deere here. That gum thing's half fiberglass and the other half of it's round. Ain't worth a hoot. Wiring leaves out, of course, that switch. Comes back here through these electron hoses, wires, whatever you want to call them. Uh, comes up here, runs into another LED. Uh, if you guys go to hooking these up, the D stands for diode. They only work one way. She's like a check valve for them electrons. Uh, it also goes into this uh, rheostat. It's also got a switch on it, uh, and I leave it off. I leave it off about all the time in case I bump a switch up there. Uh, don't want it going on. If I'm running heavy hay or wet hay, I'll go back here and I'll throw this on. I'll throw that on, and I'm still ready to go. I'm not on, uh, but I'm ready to be on as soon as I throw the switch up there. I'll bring you guys in close to that in just a second and show it to you. Uh, model numbers and whatnot on it. So you can order, if you ain't got one laying around, you can order one. Or uh, it's, uh, like I say, it's a wrist adder. You can just build yourself one with the known resistance uh, range. Uh, give me just a second. I'm going to show you how this thing's working all together. Now you guys can't see it, uh, but the light's on here. I've got power to it. I'm going to throw the main switch onto that. And you guys can watch this gauge, this v, uh, this variable deal set on, and you can see it spraying. It's set on about two, and I'm showing about 25 PSI right now. Uh, I can turn it down, and you can hear the pump tricking. Uh, the wrist, that'll do that to it. Now I'm running about 22 pounds, and it uh, depends on how wet the hay is, you run more or less. There I'm running about uh, 40 pounds, see? I can turn it up and run 60 pounds off of it. It's bumping 65, 70 pounds right now. That's way too much hay preservative. Uh, mine runs, I run about 20 PSI, uh, 22 PSI for uh, 20 to 25% moisture. Now I can see all this in the tractor. I can see this light, I can see that gauge. I can't see the numbers, but I can see that needle. I can see where I can, I can tell that it's running about right. And you can also see that stream of uh, spray. Boy, that glistens off the sun out there in the field. So there's that. Let me show you that. Uh, keep promising to show you that wrist at. Let's get in on that. I'm sorry. I'm holding the phone by my hand. So if she's shaky, she's shaky. I'm sorry about that. It's a variable speed control. It's a VS dash or VSC dash 10. And what that come off of is, uh, boy, I'm trying to remember the name brand, uh, but they use them for everything. Uh, this in here come off of uh, a, seed, a cedar, like a four wheeler cedar that you can buy up at your local farm store. Uh, of course, this, this determines how fast you're spe speeding, spreading, and uh but you can search vsc 10 on the interwebs and you can actually buy this here just standalone they're about as expensive as just going buying a cedar the reason i don't need it on my cedar i run it wide open all the time so it's just got an off -e switch on it so this here was just sitting there didn't need it for nothing it works awesome for this well, guys, I appreciate you sticking with me. It's hotter than the hubs of Hades out here, and I think I'm going to go in the house and throw some water down my neck, get me a drink. I uh, appreciate you watching this far. Uh, this video is a little too serious for what I normally do. If you want to, check out. I'd appreciate it if you would check out some of the other videos I got. Some of them's funny. Some of them's hilarious. 
some of them's cute. Uh, we do sawmilling here, uh, there, there, and uh, a lot of wood splitting, wood cutting. There's the sawdust part. We do a lot of hay, big bales, square bales. Uh, so there's your hay chaff and sawdust. Uh, remember that. Search that in your YouTube till they figure out who we're at. I'll throw a couple. Play, I don't know where they'll wind up. I throw them, they'll stick to the screen somewhere, I hope. Uh, check out another video I just made today, uh, just a while ago. You'll notice I didn't change clothes or nothing. I went in the house long enough to dry the sweat off and we're, we're getting wet again. Uh, another video on my homemade moisture meter that goes on here. Uh, we, we get by, we're tight, we're so daggum tight. Uh, around here, we get out of bed to roll over so as not to put undue wear and tear on our sheets. So, check out some of the other videos. I'm sure there's something that'll interest you. Uh, things we do on this little homestead here. And, and uh, until next time, uh, yeah, have a big time.